みなさん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's Podcast. So, for those of you who are listening to this through my subchannel, Shogo's Podcast on YouTube, you probably haven't noticed anything different, but this is actually the first audio post I'll be doing on my new actual Apple Podcast and also on Spotify. Thank you so much. If you're actually listening to this through the Apple Podcast or Spotify, welcome to my new channel that I have over there.、Uh, I was struggling on how to actually make an account and everything, but finally I was able to find it out. And because we have now achieved 1 million subscribers, I really thought we need to start doing new things. And finally, it took such a long time, but finally I have a new account. So thank you so much for listening. I have I've considered、um, reposting all of my older audios on my sub channel, Shogo's Podcast on YouTube, to Spotify and on the Apple Podcast too, but I thought、um, that'd be a little bit too much, and I really wanted、um, this new Apple Podcast and also Spotify to be a fresh start, so I thought I'll just literally start from this one. This will be the first post. Um, I'll be doing on the two、uh, on social, social media, is it called? It's called? Yeah. So, today, as my first、um, topic I'm going to be talking about, I thought I can、um, also talk again about my dream. Yeah. So, I do always talk about what the goal of my life at the end of my podcast talks, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about it and、um, go deeper into the details of how I、uh, ended up with this dream. Yeah. So, I'll try to start from literally how this dream started, changed, and how, what I'm looking forward to doing from now on into the future. Yeah. So, since when I was a young boy, Now, when I was still a student, the only thing that I wanted to do, the only thing that was in my head was to make someone happy. If someone were to ask me, like, Shogo, what do you want to do in your life? I always answered, it'd be great if I could make someone happy. And I always, I was the kind of person who always believed, like, why do I have to say something that's really specific? You know, like, I want to be a policeman, or I don't know, I want to be a musician, I want to be a chef. Like, why can't I just say something like, I want to make Someone happy because you know, being a chef or being a policeman is a job, right? I mean, jobs aren't the only occasions that, you, that can make your life more、uh, abundant or fun or things like that, right? So, I just always said I wanted to make someone happy, yeah, and that would be great if I could enjoy my life like that. But for a really long time, I literally did not know how to do that, though. And I did eventually know, understood that in order to make someone else happy, I need to do something that makes me happy, right? So, that makes me. Uh, that means I need to find something that I love.、Yep. But I couldn't find something that I was loving. I was still struggling when I was a university <laughs> student. And then from there, I started working at Shishin Samurai Restaurant as my first job. Uh, after graduating university,、um, I actually talked a little bit about it in my past videos where I did self in- introductions and such. Yeah, but it's basically a, it, by the way, it closed down unfortunately due to COVID and everything. But、um, it used to be a restaurant where they served samurai food. Samurai food. So basically, there's these、uh, few dishes that certain samurai used to eat or like to eat. Yeah. And they served that kind of meal. And I, used, I started working there as the manager, actually. And that's because、um, I did not want to do the shukatsu, the job hunting seasons that Japanese people do. I、uh, you know you can really feel the uh, collectivist uh, aspects of Japan, right? Yeah. I really did not like it. You know, I'm definitely the, not the kind of person who can fit into that. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not going to be doing this. And what am I going to be doing? Then the owner. At that time, I was actually working as a part time worker at Shishin first at the restaurant, and then he gave me the promotion to actually work there as the manager. And once I actually started working there as the manager, I needed to start studying about the samurai because all the guests that came there w a s Obviously, interested in samurai, that's the reason why they came to a samurai restaurant, right? But then I noticed that all my life, I grew up in the US, I studied Mandarin in,、uh, well, I first of all studied English in high school and also studied Mandarin in、uh, university. I was always looking outside of Japan and I've never actually studied. Uh, properly, anything about Japan? Yeah, I was kind of, I think I was trying to run away from it a little bit. And that's because,、um, you know, I've talked about this in one of my older videos too, but I experienced some bullying. Well, not some, a lo- lot of bullying actually when I was、uh, just came back from the US. And I had a really negative image towards Japan really, for a really long time. I loved my friends, I trusted my friends, but everything, all the society outside of that, I just had a really big trauma against. So, I did not have that many occasions to actually study about Japan, but Shishin gave me the chance to because I needed to. It's a job, right? And then 
that was my moment. I was like, when I started studying the history and culture, I was like, why have I not studied about this in the past? This is so interesting and so much fun. And that is the moment when I fell in love with Japanese traditional culture. Yep. And from there, even though I was just running a restaurant, I didn't want to be a person who just talks about Japanese traditional culture, but wanted to become a person who's actually experienced in it. And that is exactly the reason why I started Yaido at that time, right before I actually start uh, graduate university. And eventually I will start tea ceremony and no theater from there too. Yeah. And then I, I just really fell in love with Japanese traditional culture and talking about it, explaining about the culture too. So I worked at Kyoto Samurai Experience, another uh, facility for tourism where the guests can uh, hold on to a real katana and cut the goza mats for tameshigiri and also do Zen meditation. And after that, working at a tea ceremony experience, uh, providing tea ceremonies. And so I just really enjoyed talking with um, overseas travelers about Japanese culture. And from there, after working at three companies, my heart was just telling me to, let's try something new kind of thing, you know? There's there's something more that's, um, that we can do in life and enjoy life even more. So I just couldn't ignore these voices in my head anymore. And that's the reason why I wanted to start my own company and my own business. And at that time, I had a very nice friend. Well, he still is my friend. I had a friend who plays the Japanese traditional instruments. I actually did a Voices from Japan series, my main video. I hope you can check that out. Um, and he plays the shakuhachi and also plays the koto, the harp. So we wanted to start a musical facility together where you can go and watch a show in a private room, Jap uh, listen to Japanese music in a private room. And that's what we did. That was going to be my company, my business. But uh, that was 2022, the beginning of 2022. Do you guys remember what that what that was, right? Yeah, yes, that's right. It was COVID. That's exactly the timing when I started the business. So I used a few million yen that I have been on um, saving since I was a young boy. All of the savings that my relatives, my parents have left for me, I thought that this must be the moment that I use this money. So I put it all in. And within two months, I had to close down the business because there was absolutely no way uh, anyone is going to be coming into Japan. And even today, it is 2022 April, and even today, it's still difficult for many people to travel to Japan. So come to think of it, I was very glad that I was able to quickly make the decision to close down the business, even though it was the most heartbreaking thing I've ever done in my life. Yep. Now, until then, this is a point that's going to be really important for me uh, to talk about what my dream, dream is. But until this point, before COVID came, I always said, oh, I'm love, I am loved with Japanese traditional culture. My dream, my goal in life is to um, basically promote Japanese traditional culture to the world, you know, uh, spread it basically to the world. And that was, that was what I used to say when when there was um, still a lot of tourism going in Japan and everything. That's what I used to say. But once COVID came and everything calmed down and no one came to Japan anymore, I started to question this dream. Like, I want to spread Japanese traditional culture to the world. You know, I want more people to know about it. Well, it's not a bad dream or anything, but for me, it just didn't sound humble enough. I mean, like, Every culture around the world is great and beautiful. That's my opinion. Yeah, of course, is is equally valuable, right? So why should everyone, you know, enjoy Japanese culture so much? And after especially studying about all the social problems going on in Japan, I've noticed that Japan, of course, we do have a lot of good things in our country, but there are tens and hundreds of times more problems going on at the same time. So I couldn't say with confidence anymore that my dream is to spread Japanese culture to the world. So I basically thought at one point of actually just completely dis discarding this dream in the first place and maybe starting something new. But then at the same time, after I started YouTube on the same year in July 2020, uh, I started to receive a lot of messages, people telling me that I love Japan, I love Japanese culture, I love what you do, thank you so much. And everyone started telling me, Shogo, what you do is helping me so, uh, so much and I enjoy everything that you do. And then I noticed, okay, so Japan might just definitely not, de absolutely not, definitely not the perfect uh, dreamland that some people might imagine. But also at the same time, there are young dreams out there. 
there are a lot of young people who have their dreams, hopes and dreams in Japan, hoping to, to、um, come to Japan to travel, maybe even study, work, live here, train in our traditional culture. There are people with What should I say? With sparkling eyes, you know, and giving me messages telling me about what they want to do in the future. And I thought, oh, this is it. This is the reason why I'm going to continue fighting to protect Japanese traditional culture and, and preserve it, involve it. It's for the people who have their hopes and dreams in Japan. I cannot, I cannot work for Japan to spread its culture. I just Can't, I can't just I can't do that because I just don't feel as humble enough. But I can, but I can fight for the younger generations outside of Japan and overseas countries who have their dreams in Japan. I can fight for them. And that is the timing when I, I was just, what should I say, started to have this big dream, you know, put up this big flag saying, my dream is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. Yeah, as I always say, you know, it's actually in my、uh, channel art, in my main channel too. That's the reason why I started saying this. Yep, and this is how my dream was born. So I always talk about this because a lot of people tell me, like, Shogo,、um, I really like your videos about katana, but why do you make so many problem、um, videos about social problems in Japan? Are you like, do you want to make enemies in your own country? Or the other way around too, Shogo, I really like. Your、uh, videos pointing out the social issues in Japan.、Uh, you should only be making those videos and not talking about traditional culture. Like, why, what, what are you trying to do here? Kind of thing, basically. But what I, I want to make clear in this podcast today is that the ultimate thing that I want to do is to preserve Japanese traditional culture. And I believe that is、um, that would help future generations who are interested in training in it. But we need to understand. Which a lot of people don't understand in Japan, Japanese people don't understand who are trying to promote Japanese culture, is that if you want a culture, any form of art to thrive, you need a safe environment, right? Obviously. You, you cannot enjoy culture on a battlefield, right? Basically. After, after a very big natural disaster and everything is in tragedy, you, there, no one is going to be suddenly singing and dancing, right? We need to survive first. And that's exactly what's happening in Japan right now. The younger generations are dying from suicide, from the, as the number is the biggest in the world.、Um, there is going to be a lot of natural disasters happening soon. So many social problems like the gender inequality in Japan, the outdated laws and rules that are making people suffer, and so on and so forth. I can just keep on going talking about all this, the health problems、um, in the hospitals and also in our food. And all of this. We need to actually look at it and start taking actions to make change. Otherwise, how are we going to be carrying on any kind of culture or art? It's impossible. We need a safe environment. We need a good economy in order to preserve these things. And that's exactly the reason why I study about it, study about、um, social problems, and also train in traditional culture because two, these two things are. Two sides of a coin, basically. You can't separate them, right? I, I, I always wanted to say this for a really long time, so I'm really happy that I'm able to talk about this. Yeah. So, this brings me down to three things. In or- I have a dream, right? My dream is to make all Japan lovers' dream- dreams come true. In order to do that, there's three things I'm going to be doing. Number one is trying to solve the social problems in Japan because that is basically the bottom. What should I say? The structure, the bottom structure of where culture would be on, basically. And also, second is to evolve and preserve traditional culture in Japan. And this evolve part is very important because, as I explained in my past videos, there's a lot of problems within traditional culture itself, making it difficult for younger generations to carry on the art. Yep. So that's number two. Number three is to help out the younger generations so they can carry on the good things about Japan too. Now,、um, as I said, the suicide rate among the young is highest in Japan in the world. One out of six children in Japan is said to be living in poverty because of single mother problems and the lack of help from the government. Yep. So 
literally these three things, all three of these things must be done at the same time for my dream to come true. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing from now on through my YouTube channel, through all of my other projects and businesses that I'm going to be doing. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for listening to that. I hope uh, my message was clear. Uh, I was just struggling with a few words. I'm really sorry. I'll just uh, try to, to continue to brush up my English. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much for listening to this podcast at the very end. Um, as I explained in my uh, new video, I'm actually going to be doing so many things from now on, um, aiming for 2 million subscribers by the end of this year, also starting businesses for selling traditional craft work, and also I'm going to be starting to train um, seriously towards stage performances too. So I hope you can look forward to all the, the future challenges that we're going to be doing soon. Okay, then everyone, thank you so much. And I will be looking forward to seeing your comments. Please leave me uh, messages and comments below. Thank you so much, everyone. Arigatou gozaimashita.